So the first technique we're gonna learn with our monopod and phone is a slider technique, almost like a push-in really. So we're gonna go through the tree right here, through the leaves and then reveal, it's a bit like Jurassic Park, isn't it? Uh, reveal a location. It's a really cool technique and the way we're gonna make sure that we get the steadiest shot is we're gonna have our foot at the base of the monopod. So at the foot, we're gonna put our own foot right behind it and keep it wedged so that way the phone doesn't slip and then break. We're gonna have our hand here at the top of the pole, so it's the second point of contact. Uh, we're gonna have our second hand here on the side handle, the pan handle, so that we've got three points of contact. So we should get a nice smooth shot that way. All three points of contact will give us the best shot possible. Now, as I said, you've got the tilt slash pan handle, so you can use that as well to adjust your shot as you're moving. So if you feel that you're getting a slightly skill with shot that's not quite working out, you can correct it with the handle as well. So that's your slider and it's really, really useful technique for revealing locations, for giving yourself a bit of a more unique way of showing a location as well. Okay, so the next shot we're gonna look at is a low tracking shot. So you can use this for tracking feet, skateboards, a bicycle wheel, that kind of stuff. Get really, really cool shots by turning your phone upside down with the monopod and following that alongside your feet or wherever you're filming that's moving. Now you might think this is a really easy shot to get, but it's actually quite complicated. So let me give you three tips on how to get the smoothest low tracking shot with your monopod and phone. So the first tip is to make sure you're holding your monopod at an arm's length. If it's much shorter than this, then it's gonna to be too close to your feet or whatever you're filming, and it's gonna look like the object that you're filming is going too fast, and it will make you feel a bit sick watching it. If you keep it at arm's length, you can get a nice distance from the subject, and whether you're filming yourself or someone else, get a really nice, slick, professional looking shot from a bit of a distance rather than right up close. Okay, so the next tip is to make sure that you lower your phone down to the point of your feet and are holding the top, or the bottom rather, of your monopod right at the top here, so you can get a nice, good purchase on it. So basically, we're gonna lower this down until we get this right at our feet where we want it. And remember, we're having our hand and our arm straight out at arm's length, and we can lower it, and we wanna make sure that we're not actually bending our arm. So we're keeping it nice and straight. You can have a bit of a bend, but rather nice and straight, and you're gonna walk along with this side by side with you and your phone. In this shot, you can see the feet are quite close to the lens, so it actually feels a bit overwhelming to the eyes. It's like you're seeing something that's moving too fast for you. So this is when I had the camera at about half an arm's length, which wasn't working very well. And here you can see I set the focus to a deep focus, so we've got the background in focus now. And I put the arm further out at full stretch, and the shot looks much better. You can keep up with the feet movement. It doesn't look like it's overwhelming to the eyes, and it doesn't make you feel sick. Now this shot is a really, really cool shot to get. You're just holding the phone out of the monopod at an arm's length ahead of you, getting a nice tracking shot from the front. You can do a 180 orbit. I tried to do a 360 and as you can see, it ended up in a bit of a mess. Also a little pro tip, if you're using Filmic Pro, make sure you lock your orientation on the settings. It's a really simple thing to do and it just means that you're not gonna have to worry about flipping your image in post-production as well. Now, one of my favorite ways to use a monopod is to get a kind of shot that you just could not get without it. Remember, we're not using a gimbal or anything like that, but with just a monopod, we can get really nice establishing shots and even just a nice high up shot that we can get for a character walking into a scene. So we're gonna get the highest shots possible with this and create something really special. The way to do this is you can extend it as much as you want for what you need to film. And then you just make sure that you keep your arms as steady as possible. And most of the time, you're only gonna need this shot for a few seconds. So if you've got some wobbles at the beginning, at the end, don't worry, if you've got a few seconds of a nice high shot, you can get something quite special and that you can use in all sorts of filmmaking projects. Another technique to use to get nice steady shots for this kind of thing, getting a high up shot if you're not too comfortable just using your arms and feel like it's waving about too much or maybe it's very windy like it is now, you can get the foot of your monopod and tuck it into your shirt or your belt line and that way you've got a really nice steady way to shoot and you can hold that for ages and get a nice longer shot by tucking it into your waistline or your jumper. A really cool technique to get steady shots really high up and give you something really special for your projects. So take a look at these shots high, high up using this monopod in a way that I just couldn't get without. Now here's a really nice location. It's quite a romantic looking location. And above the tables, you can see these really nice, gorgeous light bulbs strung all the way across. And we're gonna create something really special with the bulb in the foreground. So at full length of the monopod, we can get that bulb nice and close to the camera lens, creating a bit of depth to your shot, something much more dynamic. Now, as you can see here, we wanted to put it on the left because it's right in the middle of the screen and also getting a bit of a lens flare there as well. So we can adjust that monopod, swing it a little bit to the right and keep that bulb on the left. And we're gonna get a shot that looks much, much more attractive to the eye and the framing's better as well. Here, you've got the King's College London and this would be an okay kind of shot to start a scene off with. It's a bit messy, you come down to maybe someone entering through the door. 
but we're going to move this monopod to full length and get it right up high in line with the title of this cottage and create something much more interesting and much higher budget looking. You could have people walking towards the camera lens from a distance down that path. You could have someone walking out of the college and into shot. It's something that adds a lot of high production value to your project for really not a lot of work. You can also use nature, what's around you, to frame subjects as well. So these branches that are overhanging from the trees, we can frame the center of that building amongst all of these trees and nature. So if it's something important to your storyline, if it's maybe a sinister kind of feel, you can really play around with what's around you to create really interesting shots. Now here, you can start off with a nice shot of a street, but if you go full length, you can get a bit of shadow depth of field with these flowers that are hanging up above a pub entrance or window, and you can just get something much more interesting looking than a standard shot from ground level. One of my favorite things you can create with a monopod and a phone is a jib or crane shot. Now it's definitely one of the more challenging shots that you can create with your phone and monopod, but it's totally possible. You can get Hollywood style high-end production shots, and let me show you how you do that right now. Now the first way that you can create a crane or jib shot is using the smallest version of your monopod, so like this. So it's very, very simple. All you want to do is put one hand on the bottom, one on the main grip. You're gonna face the camera side down, lying flat against the grass, but not touching it. And using your back hand to keep it completely still at the back, you're just gonna raise the top end of the monopod to give yourself a nice smooth jib or crane shot. Now this is using the monopod at its shortest length to create a jib shot. As you can see, it creates a really nice stunning shot and it's really no effort when you're using it at its shortest length as well. You might have a little bit of a wobble sometimes, so it might take a few goes to get the perfect shot that you want, but you can create something really, really stunning. And again, this isn't even full length. This is just at its shortest length. Now to get a crane or jib shot with the whole length of your monopod, you wanna keep the backhand again at the foot of the monopod. Have one hand more or less in the middle. You can have it slightly lower if you want your legs shoulder width apart. You can have the same thing again where you keep your monopod lying flat along the ground but not touching it. And in this one, you can really use the whole of your body to kind of slide it upwards and keep it as slow and smooth as possible. So you're going for this kind of motion, almost like you're scooping up to the sky. And you'll get a really nice crane and jib shot. Another way to get a smooth shot as well, as we said before, is to make sure you put the foot of your monopod in a top like this or in your waistband. That way, as you move up, you're gonna get a nice smooth shot and also you can hold that when it's at the top for much, much longer and a much smoother shot as well. You can see with the longest version of a monopod, you can get some really amazing jib and crane shots. You can get something that kind of swings up from the ground right up into the clouds almost and it gives you a really amazing Hollywood feel that you see in something much higher budget than what you're filming with just a phone. Now this shot is without post stabilization, so if you've got some wobbly shots, you can fix it with post stabilization, which is what I do using Filmic Pro a lot of the time. So this is a shot with post stabilization. It's much smoother, much silkier, and it just gives you something that looks really, really professional with a smartphone and simply a monopod. Here, this statue of Laurence Olivier, I'm sure you've all heard of him, very famous actor from back in the day on stage in England and Britain. If you want to get a shot of a character or statue or anything that's on a plinth like that or a block, you can put the monopod on that so you can get a nice steady shot and then get a nice angle on a subject that's higher than maybe you'd be able to get on just your feet. You can also play around with perspective so you can get an over the shoulder look. Maybe people are coming out from this building towards the statue to have a look at it or something. Just create something a bit more interesting there. And the great thing about using a monopod as well is that it just fits in your bag with everything that you've got. You don't have to have a big bulky set of gear and carry that around, which can be quite cumbersome. It's something very easy to work with. Now let's talk about quick tips for using your smartphone with just a monopod on its own. Now the first tip I wanna talk about is being wary of your shadows when using this technique. Now for those of you that are eagle-eyed, you might have noticed there was a shadow that just crept in. If you can't see it, have a look now and see if you can spot it. I'm really sorry if you couldn't see it, it's actually on the right hand side, so be wary when you're in bright sunlight days where your shadow is. Tip number two, check your focus. So whether you want it in a shallow depth of field, a deep depth of field, make sure that you check that every single time you take a shot. I found that once I'd taken one shot, sometimes the focus would kind of refocus itself in a way that I didn't really want for my next shot. So whether you want a locked shot, auto focus, make sure you got that checked and locked in to how you want it before every take you do. Tip number three is patience. I had a lot of shots that went wrong when I was making this video. This one that I wanted to do tracking just going forwards, point of view shot didn't really work out. Then there's this shot that got quite wobbly on me. And there's another shot here while I was pushing through the leaves doing the slider shot where I ended up getting a lens flare that I really didn't want right here. 
So just be wary of these things and know that you just have to be patient until you get the shot that you want. Well guys, if you want to learn more about Filmic Pro, then hit up this playlist that I have for you right here on screen now. And also YouTube will serve up a video that it thinks you would like as well on the opposite side. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.